Ah, oh, Denmark, you disappoint me. I guess the moral of the story is any team that is pegged by a lot of folks, myself included, to be a dark horse and go on a deep run, <laughs> be very weary because a lot of the time football likes to throw curveballs at you and um, you get unexpected uh, results like this. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put my neck on the line. I, I had Denmark going very far in this World Cup. And they crater out with one measly point, bottom of the group, winless, one goal. Australia, one, Denmark, nil. Group D. And I think this is a group that can be summed up as you have one powerhouse team, that's France, and you have three other sides, one that is a dark horse, and then two underdogs with Australia and Tunisia and one of those three did not show up and it left the chips on the table for one of the other two to take advantage and in this case it was the Socceroos and Australia advanced to the round of 16 for the first time since 2006 rallying after that 4-1 drubbing they took at the hands of France in match day one. And you got to give a lot of respect here, both to Graham Arnold, their manager, and for the boys in the gold and green for the grit, really, that they showed these last two games. It wasn't pretty, but Australia did what they needed to do. They showed up in a way that Denmark never did. And I think for Denmark, really, the issue is it's not just that they didn't show up. They never hit the ground running in this tournament. It never kicked off. It was just... I don't know what it was. Perhaps they came into this tournament a little bit too confident from the Nations League performances. But give it up. Give it up for guys like Harry Sutar, Aziz Bayic, who had a great game today at the back. Um, Aaron Moy. Anchor in midfield. Matthew Leckie. And Riley McGree. And really the faith that Graham Arnold has put in Riley McGree. Where in previous uh, appearances for Australia, he was lacking. He was lacking. But it's, 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 it's fabulous for, for Australia. Six points. Who would have thought Australia would finish with six points in this group? Many would have anticipated they'd be one of the worst teams entering Qatar 2022. Matthew Ryan. My goodness me. Matthew Ryan was a clutch keeper these last two matches against Tunisia and Denmark. Because when Australia was surviving that early onslaught, and inside the first 20 to 25 minutes of this match, Denmark were going at them hard. Denmark was initially successful at getting behind that back line right on the right-hand flank and causing a lot of issues. They were trying to create something going forward. And Matthew Ryan came in. He kept his composure. He made wise clearances off the line. He was quick to respond, and he snuffed out any danger that came in front of the Australian goal. Denmark registered 13 shots in this game to Australia's eight. Three on target to Australia's four. So, so Denmark had more shots, but Australia had more on target. But Denmark had the bulk of possession. They had 69% to Australia's 31%. The big takeaway from all of this, I think this really goes to show, you don't need a star-studded squad to succeed at the World Cup. It helps. But Australia, this was a re result of team cohesiveness and coming together, good tactical and managerial adjustments from the first match, after that first match loss, and they came through against a side who maybe... Entered this tournament with a little bit of complacency, maybe a little bit with their head in the clouds, riding on the high the last two tournaments of the Euros and the Nations League. And I like it. I, you know, I like the fact that this group, the two teams who advanced, were the insane depth star-studded defending champions and another team who has one of their strikers plays in the second division in Japan. 
that is insane. You have a lot of these guys on this Australian team that play for the likes of like Melbourne, um, local clubs in the Australian A League, like Adelaide, uh, Brisbane, all that. That that is stunning, and it's a testament to how the fact that like the World Cup is is truly at times unpredictable, and it's all about who shows up on the day, who has their shit together. Denmark, to put it bluntly, did not. And this is the worst finish for a Danish team in the World Cup in a very long time. Bottom with just one point, like I said. Very toothless up front. And you know what? They had they had stretches in the previous match against France where, remember when they equalized? And it looked like Denmark would, would possibly go on to win that game and beat France for a third time in a row. But them coming out in this match needing a win against Australia was a direct result of the fact that they did not take care of business against Tunisia. Australia would have progressed with a draw in this game. And this played into Australia's hands because Denmark had to go for it. The fact that Australia held on in the in the first stages of this game, it meant that as the game wore on, it played more and more into their favor and Denmark had to push numbers forward. They did play a high line. And as we know... Matthew Leckie's goal, you know, uh, as borderline world class as it was when when Australia had the opportunity on the breakaway, it was a direct result of Denmark um, pushing too far forward, I think, and playing that high line. And that high line, and, and all it took in the end was just Australia having one good clear cut chance on the counter, and and they punished Denmark for it. So, well done, Australia. Well done. You're the first Asian team to advance this year. Maybe you'll be the only one. We'll see. Denmark, I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad. I had high hopes for you.